Welcome back to the channel, the real history of football, Sheffield, the home of football and our fourth instalment. Yes, we're starting a football history video in yet another car park. So before we get into the main topic of this video, let's get why we're here out the way first. One very early association football event that nearly always gets missed and really does need noting happened here. So, where is here? Well, we're at Morrison's Supermarket in Hillsborough in Sheffield, which is actually a converted old military barracks called originally Hillsborough Barracks. Sheffield FC, before they played Hallam on the 26th of December 1860, the first ever match between two organised association football clubs, they did manage to play at least two other matches before that match. Both these earlier games were played against regimental soldiers. The regimental soldiers from Hillsborough Barracks and they were played here at the barracks. The first was in December 1858 and the second was played on the 17th of December 1860, just nine days before they played that famous game against Hallam. This first game in 1858 was the first ever match involving an association football club. That's why it's significant. The regiment, of course, was not a club, but Sheffield FC was. So this, of course, is yet another Sheffield football first. That's why it needs noting. We know more about the second game in 1860. Accounts suggest it took place at the Queen's ground, straight opposite the barracks. You can see the Queen's Hotel Public House across the road from the barracks on the southwest side of the barracks and the large open space the other side of the Queen's Hotel in the bottom left hand corner of this old map is the Queen's ground. Logic would suggest that since the barracks parade ground itself would have been full of horses, equipment, men etc that this area would not have been used for the game. We also know that the exercising area which at some point included an actual football pitch and rifle range and is marked on this 1907 plan. This football pitch was actually in the barracks grounds, it's next to the Loxley River and the Penniston Road. This pitch was on the opposite side of the barracks to the Queen's ground. We're not certain, but this is the most likely location for this historic 1858 match. Ironically, this space is now used by B&Q and is part of the B&Q and its car park. It's a different B&Q to the one just off Queen's Road where Sheffield FC's East Bank ground was. I'd love to get further information about this first 1858 game if anybody has it but for now it seems that the first ever games involving an association football club both home and away took part in modern B&Q car parks. Today, of course, the Queen's ground has gone and it's been replaced with housing. The actual Queen's Hotel, which the ground was named after, is still there. OK, while we look at the Queen's ground area today, let's get back to the main topic of this video. If you are a football supporter, then you may not know it, but you are part of a culture, a football culture that involves a commitment normally to a club. You're committed to this club's traditions, its colours, its songs, its history, its grounds, players, its legendary matches, as well as its defeats. People's involvement with the sport of association football, to the extent that they join clubs and immerse themselves in this kind of cultural experience, started to happen in Sheffield during the 1860s. And this was the first place anywhere in the world to experience what we might call today the passion, the ups and downs of following our clubs. It was the world's very first association football culture. I want you to imagine you were back in Sheffield in 1861. You're likely to be a local cricket club member and you've heard about the game that other cricket clubs are playing in the winter months called football. You may have even been involved in one of the many unofficial kickabouts that had been springing up around Sheffield in the mid to late 1850s. You may have even known about Sheffield FC's early matches against Hillsborough Barracks soldiers teams. 
you're now aware that there are organised official football clubs that just play football. And some have started to play against each other. You know, of competitions between them and of rivalries. You may even be a member of one of these early football clubs yourself. And now you want to start your own from your own cricket club, your hotel, your local pub, your street or local church. You want to start a team to get involved in this new developing sporting phenomenon. Most importantly, these football clubs are open to you. You can join them. As long as you can afford the subscription, of course. They're not closed within institutions like far-off universities. From early 1861 in Sheffield, the football craze had started to explode. By the start of 1862, we know that at least 22 clubs existed playing matches against each other in Sheffield. There may have been more than that that didn't get reported in local newspapers or survived in club minutes. But it meant that there were around two new clubs a month forming across the city. This is before the explosion of Sheffield Rules football spread to neighbouring areas like Nottinghamshire and then further afield to places like Wrexham, the Potteries and other areas of the North and Midlands of England. In this fourth video in the series, I want to find out a bit more about some of these early Sheffield clubs that were forging Sheffield's earliest football culture. Most have not survived. The growing industrial city forced many of them to give up their grounds. Those that did not move, folded, and their mem membership moved to other clubs. The survivors from this period were either the highly nomadic teams like Sheffield FC, Sheffield Wednesday, or the teams that already owned their ground outright, or maybe on the edge of the city, and so did not have the threat of land development swallowing up their playing space, such as Hallam. If these clubs had survived, then Sheffield today could be claiming 15 to 20 of the world's oldest organised association football clubs. So we are, of course, in Sheffield in the north of England and we're in the northwest part of the city. We started in the middle of the old parade ground in the middle of the barracks and then we walked up to the location of the old Queen's Hotel. And then we walked behind the Queen's Hotel, now called the Queen's Ground Public House, and looked at the area where the Queen's Ground actually was, the location of the second 1860 match. We've also been to the B&Q car park where the old barracks exercise ground was to look at the location, the possible location of the 1858 game. The second half of this video, we're going to go back to where we were in the first two videos to the Bramall Lane area just south of the city centre. We're going to start in the Highfield area and walk down Alderson Road to Parkfield House where we've been before and from there we're going to walk down the bottom end of Bramall Lane and up through Healy and we're going to complete the video at Healy Parish Church, which is just here. So we've come down from North West Sheffield and Hillsborough Barracks, and I'm now standing behind the Cremone Public House on the northern edge of what was the Highfield ground. Highfield was Sheffield Wednesday's first home between 1867 and 1870. It was also used by local clubs Mackenzie and Wellington during the 1867 Yodin Cup tournament. Alderson Road, which we will walk down, cut straight through where the pitch was located. OK, we're in 1861, just after the Sheffield FC and the Hallam FC Boxing Day game. And the birth of football culture is starting to explode across Sheffield. Of the 1861 clubs, I need to make sure I mention Norfolk FC. The club takes its name not from Norfolk the county, but from Norfolk Park, which was named after the Duke of Norfolk, who for hundreds of years has had various stately homes near Sheffield and owns even today a lot of land around Sheffield and in Sheffield. This is where Norfolk played, Norfolk Park. It's again a very short walk from the B&Q car park, the East Bank ground where Sheffield FC played. And of course, it also was a cricket ground. Norfolk FC go down in history as being 
the losing finalist to Hallam in the very first cup final, the Yodan Cup Cup final of 1867. But they also have another significant contribution since they introduced the idea of the corner kick into the Sheffield rules. Norfolk FC unfortunately dissolved in 1881. We know that from Hallam's records that during 1861 they played other clubs including Pittsmoor and York FC. York FC were named after a hotel in Broom Hill and to my knowledge they are actually the very first club of this kind coming from a hotel. The hotel is now a popular public house. It was built in 1830. I'm not certain where York FC played. Broom Hill was quite a built-up area in 1861, and the surrounding area is quite steep and hilly. They may have used the established pitch down at Collegiate School nearby. So even during 1861, the game was starting to spread away from just cricket clubs, and other places where people met socially were starting to form teams. Football was becoming a more cross-society cultural phenomenon. Another 1861 team we need to mention was Norton Oaks. They also came from a cricket club and they played at a cricket ground that still exists today in the south of Sheffield. This is the location. It's highly likely that the playing area of the football pitch was near to the cricket ground. If this pitch had survived, of course, it would be one of the oldest in existence. As we moved into 1862, we saw more clubs arriving as part of this exploding football scene. We had Fir Vale, who also came from the Pittsmoor area. Milton, we think, came from an area just west of the centre of Sheffield. There is a really long road called Milton Street stretching right out to Broom Hall. The end of this street has now been built over. In 1862, along this street, you would have had houses, works, and also pubs. And it's likely that the residents, or even the workers along this street, may have met in these local pubs to forge their football club. There was no likely space to play in this area. It was very built up. Reports are that Milton played somewhere in Healy. Again, this would have been close to the East Bank ground. Another 1862 club was Mackenzie FC. They, again, probably came from a street. Mackenzie Street is in the Sharrow area of Sheffield. And again, this was a built-up area, not as much built-up as the Milton area. There were spaces locally that Mackenzie FC may have played in if they did come from this part of Sheffield. Regardless of this, they did actually play at Myrtle Road, which was on a flat area at the top of a steep hill, rising from where the East Bank and the Olive Grove grounds are. The Myrtle Road ground was actually the recreation ground of the Ball Pub. Here it is. Later, Sheffield Wednesday were also to play at this ground. Another clue that suggests... Mackenzie came from the Sharrow area is that there was a popular pub at, right at the bottom of Mackenzie Street called the Washington. Again, this is possibly the source of the inspiration behind the club, a place where local people went to socialise and from that communal area came the idea for a local football club. The remaining significant 1862 club was Healy FC, but we're going to come back to them later. At this point, it's worth noting that Knox County had just formed, so the evidence that the Sheffield cultural explosion had hit nearby cities was now happening around 1862 to 1863. This is five years after the original Creswick pressed spark and template was developed by Sheffield FC. To put that in perspective, try and think what you were doing five years ago. To remain with Knox County, and I have no wish to make new enemies in Nottingham, but they claim to be the oldest professional club in the world. I'm not sure what professional means these days, other than making money out of providing your services. In 1862, they did not have any paid players, not that I'm aware of. And I'm certain they didn't make the first payment to a player in the history of the game. It was Sheffield Wednesday who actually have this credit to their history of being the first club to pay a player professionally. 
I have also heard Notts County as being described as the oldest league club, which again isn't true since both Sheffield FC and Hallam FC play in leagues. Notts County are the oldest club of the original 12 clubs who formed the English Football League in 1888. And I think this is where the confusion comes from, since professionalism was embedded into the game at this point. In reality, they are one of the oldest clubs in the game, but they do need to be seen as a significant byproduct of the ever-growing popularity of the organised culture of the game that started just 35 miles north of them. In 1863, we saw the emergence of Exchange Cricket Club, who formed a football team. Exchange played at Hallam Farm. If anybody knows where Hallam Farm is, then I'd love to know, please. Please leave a comment. In 1882, Exchange were absorbed by Park Grange FC, who played at Sheaf House. And Park Grange finally dissolved in 1890. Also in 1863, saw the emergence of Broom Hall. I can only assume Broom Hall played in the grounds of Broom Hall, which is here. And the grounds extended down to Eckersall Road. So I am surmising that the ground was on the flatter area towards the bottom near Ecclesall Road. This is another part of Sheffield which was quickly lost to high value housing in the later 1800s and so with these developments went the club. Broom Hall was right next to the collegiate school ground. These videos are about the history of association football and not about games played with balls in universities, colleges or similar closed institutions. But since many of Sheffield's footballing founding fathers attended this school and no doubt gained inspiration for the game from this pitch, it does need a mention. United Mechanics in 1865 played at Norfolk Park. And their formation is evidence of what up till now had mainly been a middle-class sport starting to be infiltrated by other social groups around the Sheffield community. I'm now going to be controversial again. Of course, Sheffield United Football Club claimed to have used the word United in their name first. Clearly, this wasn't the case, as United Mechanics did this before them. As we get to 1866, the club Wellington is a little harder to pin down. There was, and still is, a pub called the Wellington down the hill from the old area of Sheffield where Hansfield Road was. And there was some flat open space nearby in between. Wellington was supposed to play at Hansfield Park. Like many towns and cities, the roads in Sheffield, if they weren't named after people, generally were named after the area they went through or went to. Hounsfield Road goes out of Sheffield in a northwesterly direction towards this flat open space. Was this Hounsfield Park? It's not too far from the Wellington pub and seems to have been the only open space that Wellington FC could have played at if they were from this pub. Did this make Wellington actually the first pub team? Did they form before October 1866? because at the moment Garrick FC claimed to have that title and they were formed in October 1866. Again, any help gratefully received in the comments. There was another Wellington pub in the area, but this was closer to Hillsborough and the Queen's Road ground. And it was less likely that people from this pub would have traveled back towards town to where we think Hounsfield Park might have been. Also in the area, there were pubs called the Light Horsemen and the Royal Lancers. So in this field where we think Hounsfield Park was, did that have some connection with horses? Who knows? Also in 1866, we do know about the Garrick Tavern. They are, as I said earlier, currently regarded as the oldest pub team in the world. They had over 400 members. I'm guessing they hold this distinction as Garrick must have been more of a pub compared to the York Hotel which formed earlier in Broom Hill. If you look at 
the old maps, the Garrick was actually across the road from the Adelphi Hotel, right in the middle of Sheffield. So again, this is another club that had to travel a little way out of Sheffield to actually be able to play its matches. And it played at the East Bank ground, Sheffield FC's ground. This is the location of the Garrick Tavern. It's in the southeast corner of where the Crucible Theatre now is. The Adelphi Hotel would have been in the main foyer of the Crucible Theatre. The actual tavern itself is situated between where I'm standing and where the gentleman in this image is standing. Garrett dissolved in 1878, but before they did, they made their mark in football history by in 1868 losing to the very first golden goal. This happened at Bramwell Lane when they played Sheffield Wednesday in the final of the world's second oldest cup competition, the Cromwell Cup. Oliver Cromwell, no, not that Oliver Cromwell, the Oliver Cromwell in Sheffield was a theatre owner. He owned the Alexandra Theatre, and like Yodan before him, he wanted to create a local tournament, a local cup competition. Cromwell was also a Garrick player. The last club to note from this early 1860s era was, of course, Sheffield Wednesday, who formed in 1867. Their history is well documented, but it's important to recognise that they were an important part of this early development of association football and its evolving culture. Sheffield Wednesday was just one of many clubs playing the game around the, the city of Sheffield. I want to finish this video about the early explosion of football culture into the world, an explosion of teams, grounds, matches, competitions, cups, etc. The first of its kind anywhere in the world. I want to finish by focusing on two men and one last early club. Many football fans will know the stories of football being played by posh southerners, amateurs, gentlemen, against hardened working class northerners who, to the disgust of the southerners, actually got paid to play the game. Well, probably the best example of this story is the story of Jack Hunter. Jack Hunter was the player coach of Blackburn Olympic. With Blackburn Olympic, Jack famously won the FA Cup in 1883, the first Northern working class club to achieve this. Jack Hunter also played for England, and on one occasion, they even let him captain the national side. Well, Jack Hunter started his football career in Sheffield, and he started it with Healy FC in 1870. He left Healy under a cloud as he fell out with Nathaniel Creswick and others for getting paid to play the game. Hunter wasn't the first professional player in the game. As I've said earlier, Sheffield Wednesday hold the distinction of employing the game's first true professional. Then this was a couple of years before Hunter's time. But Hunter's story does reflect the growing pressures at the time for working class players to see the game as a means of earning a living. Healy FC themselves have football history credentials. They played first at Wellsbrook and then Mearsbrook Parks. They did actually make it to the fourth round of the FA Cup themselves in the 1881-82 season. But more importantly, being formed in 1862, they are the world's first team to originate from a church. Other famous church teams are Tottenham Hotspur, Everton, Aston Villa, Southampton, Man City, etc. All those clubs followed Healy's lead. Another significant fact about Healy Church is that it is the burial location of the Creswick family. This is because the church was close to their family home for many years and they were part of the congregation. Nathaniel Creswick, as we know, established Sheffield FC and he was also instrumental in encouraging Hallam to form. And he must have had inspiration behind the team to emerge from this small Sheffield chapel, which was just a short walk from where his own club played. Born in 1831, Creswick was actually only 26 when he became the first secretary and treasurer of the newly formed Sheffield FC in 1857. I think it's fitting that the father of association football lies right next to the door of the church that gave birth to the world's first church club. Where else would he be? Today, organised association football culture is global.
Football is the world's biggest spectator sport and its culture is also the biggest in the world. Just look at what happens around the world in homes, bars, shops, cars, fan zones, etc. Every time a World Cup comes around. This concept of organised clubs emerging from communities, localities, competing with players, members and followers identifying with them, started here in Sheffield. And it's another main reason why Sheffield should be regarded as the home of football. I hope you have gained something interesting and useful from this video. We do need to take the time to cover the many facts we do know, but I hope you can see in this video I haven't shied away from some of the gaps in our knowledge about the game. Maybe some more facts will emerge in response to my take on things here. We've mentioned the Oden Cup and the Cromwell Cup so far in this and previous videos. Sheffield can actually claim the four oldest cup competitions. I aim to look at these in more detail in the next video. Please like, subscribe, and if you can help fill in any of the gaps of our early knowledge of the game, please leave a comment. Till next time. <laughs>